what do you need to know before you purchase waterfront property? Recently, I had a client that was looking at purchasing a property on Lake Austin. And it's one of the homes that sits up high on a hill. And the neighbors on both sides had boat docks and had trams down to their boat docks. And the um, property that my clients were looking at did not have a boat dock at this time. Through a little bit of research, they found out that, yes, they could get a permit to build a boat dock. However, the city of Austin would not give a permit to have a tram installed. So, knowing the restrictions on the specific lake that you are purchasing on is so important. I have 10 questions I want you to find the answers to before you make this purchase. Number one, and I really think this is the one of the main things you need to look at, is how will a drought affect this piece of waterfront property? Some of those lakes, the answer is not much. And then some, like Lake Travis, is a lot. So on Lake Travis, there are portions of the lake where if you purchase on it, you may have five years with no water. And then there are other portions, such as like the main basin, where you will always have water. So know that one. Look on Google Earth. Google Earth is your friend when it comes to purchasing waterfront property. Another question is, is there actually water access from this property? Just because it's waterfront doesn't mean you can actually get down to the water. And you will see this often on Lake Travis and Lake Austin. Now, if you are perched up high on a hill, like where the oasis is, I mean, you're not going to get down to the water. However, there are lots where you can have a tram built or a lengthy bit of stairs. But once again, with that, you need to know, is that allowed on that lake? And the answer is not always yes. And don't assume just because the next door neighbor has a tram that a tram can still be built because there may be new regulations that have been implemented. Lake Austin, they're not allowing new trams. Lake Travis, they still are. Will that remain the same? I don't know, it may change. Question number three. If the property does not already have a boat dock or if the boat dock is old and dilapidated and you know that it's going to need to be rebuilt, you need to know about what are the boat dock restrictions for that lake. Another question is, can you even build a boat dock? Because on lakes such as Canyon Lake, you can't even build a boat dock because it is a stipulation there for the Army Corps of Engineers. So if that's a deal breaker for you, then that's not a lake that you wanna purchase on. If you want a really large boat dock, Lake Austin definitely has restrictions. And I believe that it's based on the amount of waterfront that that property has, and they calculate how the size, the width of the boat dock can be. So if you're going to have two large boats, can you put two slips in there? If you wanna have a second story, is that going to be allowed? How much space can be enclosed? There's so much information on that that I don't even have, and that would be information for a permit um, expediter. They would, that's who I would refer you to. Number four, how private is that waterfront lot? Is that lot located next to a park that on weekends all through the summer you are going to have crowds of people? Or is it quiet and private? Is it in a subdivision where you have small lots and a lot of neighbors? Is it hidden behind a marina where you're going to have constant boat traffic? Uh, when you're on some of the smaller, narrower lakes like Lake Placid, Lake LBJ, sometimes being off on one of the canals is a benefit because you don't get as much boat traffic right in front of your house. 
And then question number five, how much water frontage does that property have and how is it calculated? One of the reasons why this is important is, you know, it depends on what you want to be doing right in front of your house, but it also will impact how valuable that land is. Zoning issues, are there wetlands on the property? Environmental impact issues, those are all questions for an attorney. Question number seven, how much of that property is actually usable? Once again, if you are perched up on a hill and a lot of that land just goes to a drop off, then there may not be, when it says there it's an acre of land, it may not really be an acre of usable land. Is there a portion of it that's in the floodplain? And, um, or also when you buy lake property, you buy out into the water. And so a lot of times a good portion of that lot is covered up by water. So if having a large property is important to you, you, you need to know how much of it is actually usable. Question number eight. What are the deed restrictions? And if there's a homeowners association, what are the homeowners association restrictions? And are those things that you can live with? Something that a lot of people like to do these days uh, with their waterfront properties is use them for short-term rentals. And you need to find out if that's what you want to do, are short-term rentals even permitted in that area? Question number nine. Water views command higher prices. So if you have, if it's a property that has expansive water views from the structure, from the home, Typically that is going to be a higher priced property. If the home view, if the water views are obstructed by trees and other homes, typically the price will be less. Number 10, you need to be aware that different lakes have different issues. And working with someone that is fam familiar with that area and the concerns and issues on that lake is very important. As I've mentioned, Lake Austin has a lot of restrictions when it comes to the size and type of boat dock that can be built, or if they will even give you a permit to have a um, tram installed. So then you could buy a property perched up high on a hill and then not even be able to access the water. And some people are, are fine buying a house like that because they just really want to enjoy the views. However, if you are purchasing that waterfront property so that you can actually get down to the water, that's something you need to know. If you have any other questions about purchasing waterfront property in Central Texas, please give me, reach out to me, and I'd be happy to answer some questions for you. If this video has been helpful, please like it. And if you'd like other information, other and watch any of my other YouTube videos, please subscribe. Thank you.